Ah, morning. Even if you're not a morning person, you gotta admit there's just something about it that feels beautiful. Time to get a bowl that we'll never admit is far too large to fill with fruity pebbles. And of course, milk. Now, since you're a responsible adult and you watch your health very closely, you make sure that your milk is of the highest quality every time you go to the store. And yes, I understand that normally the one who is shoveling a bowl of sugared sawdust isn't watching their health that closely, even if they get the highest quality of dairy available at their local Walmart, but that's kind of besides the point here. Now, type of cereal aside, you may be the type who is very particular about what goes into said cereal. Maybe you're lactose intolerant and get a jug of lactate or almond milk. Maybe you're a 2% only household, none of that whole or skim stuff allowed. And hey, maybe if you grew up in a zoo, you're an orange juice in the cereal type of person, which in that case, this may be the only representation you'll ever get. One thing is for certain, you actually seem to have a few good options in that department these days. So here we are sitting in the kitchen, munching on cereal in any way that we like without a care in the world. But wait, did you know that the milk you're drinking could be leaving you missing out on valuable nutritional benefits? And that's right, your milk is totally lying to you. It sits there looking all healthy, acting like it's some sort of you know amazing thing, but it's not, it's kind of stupid. And you may be asking, well, wait a minute, if my milk is allegedly not being all it can be, what are my other choices to get all the nutritional benefits I'm owed? As it turns out, there's a product just for you, raw milk. It turns out there's been this other option out there that most of us didn't realize was actually a viable choice, at least according to the Raw Milk Institute. It's allegedly the best possible selection for a large number of reasons that you just know I had to take a deeper look into. From what I've been finding in my research, this raw milk might be the stuff of magic, the potion seller's strongest potion, if you will. Something that makes you wonder why it's not on store shelves in every corner of the USA and beyond, rather than hiding or being outright outlawed. So it's time to snoop around, take a look at what each side is saying on behalf of raw milk or otherwise. So let's get into it. Hello and welcome to The Corporate Casket. I'm the Illuminati and today we're going to be taking a deep dive into the world of raw milk. What on earth is this godly liquid that people are traveling across state lines to get their hands on? According to the CDC, raw milk is milk from any animal that has not been pasteurized to kill harmful bacteria. And that seems fairly simple and dare I say, normal. Well, maybe it was normal hundreds or even thousands of years ago, but it's not as normal today for safety and storage reasons. The campaign for real milk uses some flowery language and caps its definition off with a great line, just as nature intended short, sweet, and suspiciously similar to the same type of marketing campaigns done by Raw Milk's classic competition, the pasteurized milk giants, God Milk, just saying. And personally, I just kind of find the line funny because just as nature intended, like the milk is intended for baby calves, not for humans, but I guess we're just gonna ignore that and keep going for right now. Now, clearly they're trying to give off the idea that something like the process of pasteurization is a bad thing that ruins milk without even needing to say it. The explanation of raw milk is really as simple as straight from the cow to your fridge. What's wrong with wanting milk that doesn't have to go through a process like pasteurization or homogenization? At first glance, I would assume nothing. It's just a seemingly less processed version, so to speak. So what is pasteurization anyway? Well, it's the act of heating the milk at high temperatures for shorter periods of time to kill harmful microbes, but it leaves the same taste and overall nutritional value. It was originally intended for wine and beer, but it turns out that this works great for milk as well. And it makes it significantly safer for everyone to drink and use. And as an added bonus, it also helps the milk last longer in the fridge. Less bacteria means it will be slower to spoil in general. So your chances of getting E. coli are greatly reduced and less milk would be wasted. The dairy farmers of Canada say that the process kills 100% of pathogenic bacteria, yeast, and mold, and 90 to 95% of other bacteria. Now, those are definitely some promising numbers, and it certainly makes me feel a bit safer about the whole ordeal. Knowing that pasteurization not only makes the milk safer, but also lasts longer, it really makes me concerned about the health claims made by raw milk with their removal of this seemingly irreplaceable process. The Raw Milk Institute would have you believe that pasteurization kills pretty much everything nutritionally beneficial rather than just the harmful stuff, and it can cause lactose intolerance and all sorts of other weird things. They would also have you believe that raw milk is associated with lower rates of asthma, eczema, and even ear infections, apparently. 
They also claim on their site that raw milk consumption in children correlates with higher lung function and lower incidence of allergenic diseases in adults. So what was that old saying again? All right, that's the one. Correlation does not equal causation. As it turns out, it looks like a lot of the scientific research they cite does not specifically back up the statements that they themselves are making about the milk, but I'm getting just a hair ahead of myself here. So let's see what we've got so far. We have a milk alternative that goes right from the cow to you, or as the Raw Milk Institute puts it, from grass to glass. A nonprofit company that wants the world to know that most of the milk we drink is bad, or at the very least, worse than the alternative they're proposing. Does what they say about raw milk hold any weight though? Does it actually do anything the Institute claims? Well, let's kind of dig in a little bit. And so go ahead, pour another bowl of cereal because this is gonna be a bit entertaining. Now, before we get into the fun, I have to make a massive disclaimer right here. The claims surrounding the benefits of raw milk are very convoluted and disorganized, depending on where you look. I tried to go straight to the source, but you see, if you look at the supposed benefits of raw milk just about anywhere, they'll tell you to look at studies from the Raw Milk Institute. However, when I did so, the studies were actually very difficult to interpret and frankly seemed convoluted on purpose. They speculate within their findings and overall reading this gave me one hell of a headache. Now, the chapter I wrote was after reading these studies a few times, and from what I believed, getting a good understanding of their meaning. Yet upon review, I'm not entirely certain that I truly comprehend the claims that are actually made by the Raw Milk Institute to begin with. At some times, I felt like they were claiming they could cure asthma, and at others, it seemed as if they were more, raw milk has enzymes that can help children with asthma route. The reason why I say this is because I don't want anyone to walk away from this episode believing that I misled them as to what the raw milk industry as a whole is saying. Point blank, depending on where you look, it says messy, convoluted, contradictory, and misleading things. So feel free to take this chapter at face value. If you've ever drank raw milk before, if you've ever been a part of that community, I'm curious what you may think of this. What claims did you hear? And what were you told that raw milk could do? because honestly, it feels like the studies say so many different things with no real consistencies. But with that out of the way, let's continue. Okay, so we've kind of established that the stuff is great, apparently. From the outlandish claims of it being able to cure asthma, the only thing it feels like it can't do is your taxes. If the Raw Milk Institute is to be believed, of course, in this scenario. As far as their claims are concerned, they seem to have plenty of sources for their supposed information sources that we're gonna take a look at. Right in their learn about raw milk section, they show off all kinds of findings that lead them to their conclusion of it being far better than good old 2%. The claim that stands out the most to me has to be the idea that drinking raw milk is associated with lower rates of asthma. Now, I'm sure you're just as flabbergasted as I was when I initially read that information. I just don't see how there's a way that milk can help with a chronic respiratory disease. The Institute seems to have its bases covered on this one though. They cite a study from the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology. The study itself is very thorough, but their conclusion doesn't seem to directly appear to support the statement that the Raw Milk Institute makes. In fact, here's the conclusion of said study. The findings suggest that the protective effect of raw milk consumption on asthma might be associated with the whey protein fraction of milk. This is actually in direct contradiction to what the Raw Milk Institute states that the consumption of raw milk is associated with lower rates of asthma. The study linked just doesn't seem to say anything of the sort. The very study that they offer as evidence doesn't even support what they're saying. I may be acting a bit nitpicky here, but come on. I mentioned correlation not equaling causation earlier, and I feel like it applies to a lot of the studies cited by this organization. Another claim made right from the same list is that raw milk is also associated with lower rates of eczema. And what does the study say that they used to back this one up? Well, aside from barely mentioning eczema, like really at all, there's this little nugget. No effect was seen for farm milk consumption beyond the first year of life. No mention is made of the specific effect of farm milk on eczema. Your own source just said, no, like, come on. Like, you, why did you have to make that one so easy to debunk? Like that was almost too easy. It was comical in a way, really. You can't use a study out of context as an example to back up your claim, no matter how vague your claim tries to be. 
I have a feeling, and of course this is my opinion, that they just kind of skimmed through the title and thought maybe the study matched what they wanted to tell the world and then just threw it in as a reference. Like, did they actually read the study? Who knows? But my money is on no. This is giving me vibes of like the kid that read Cliff Notes and tried to pretend they read the whole book. Now, there could indeed be a connection, but these studies aren't being used in the way they should. It almost feels as though they're betting that people will just click the link, see a giant study full of words they don't understand and simply trust that what they're saying is true based on it being from what they think is a reputable source. The Institute makes all sorts of claims that so far we have yet to see any true evidence for. Like I said before, there could very well be indeed a connection with said claims and studies, but what's being said by each party isn't really lining up and that doesn't sit perfectly well with me. Thankfully, the Raw Milk Institute isn't the only game in town when it comes to educating the public about its alleged benefits. A campaign for raw milk was founded in 1998 with the goal of making raw milk more accessible to those that wanted it. Allegedly, when the site was launched, they only had 37 sources assisting people in finding the spectacular product and have now grown to over 2000. I'm not sure if they actively lobby and try to change the laws regarding raw milk, but currently there are 13 states that allow full on retail sales of the stuff with 17 that only allow it if you go and buy it directly from that farm. 20 still do not allow it entirely. I'm sure the landscape has changed a lot in the past 10 to 20 years, no thanks to them. Now, this site does not provide studies and try to back up any claims, but look, they have a tab that specifically says safety, so you know I had to click it. And of course, I'm absolutely certain the information displayed on this page will be full of completely objective facts about how raw milk isn't some miracle cure for ailments, right? Well, unfortunately, that doesn't appear to be the case. What we have here is a page full of unchecked facts about raw milk, including one of the more brazen statements on food I've ever read. According to a campaign for real milk, No other food that we consume contains a built-in safety system like the one in raw milk. This statement does not appear to be directly backed up with any studies like the ones we saw from the Raw Milk Institute. Regardless of whether or not those studies are actually backed by anything, as I was talking about earlier, at least they seemingly tried a bit harder than these guys. I know the bar is practically on the floor, but at least the other guys tried to cite studies. Like they tried at least, like that's, come on, that's something, I guess. And I mean, how can you really sit there and tell me that milk is the best of the best, knowing that we have other foods like broccoli, legumes, yogurt, and berries, just to name a few, some of which have been proven to be worthy of a name like being a superfood. While none of them alone can do it all like raw milk is claimed to, they are all still incredibly important to a healthy diet. But with this raw milk page, we just have a page full of claims like raw milk having numerous bioactive components that can kill pathogens, prevent pathogen absorption in the intestinal walls and strengthen the immune system. I'm not 100% sure where they're actually getting this info from, especially when it comes to making the intestinal walls more resistant to the absorption of pathogens. That's kind of the sort of thing you'd need to back up with verifiable proof or at the very least, evidence. This group is starting to feel very irresponsible to me right now. Now, they also have a page dedicated to vilifying the process of pasteurization. And I'm serious. The page itself is called The Shame of Pasteurization, and they write at length about the nutrients and vitamins lost in the process, stating that leading health officials are giving people erroneous, misleading, and factually incorrect information about pasteurization not destroying milk's nutritional value. Can you imagine meeting someone who talks about how boiling your water on a camping trip ruins its nutritional value? Now, I do know that water is vastly different when compared to milk, and it's a bit of a stretch to do so here, but just work with me for a moment. It's kind of hilarious to me how these people have done their best to try and make something as simple as heating milk to make it safer a bad thing. I'm not going to say that pasteurization is perfect and has never had any issues, nor am I saying that it doesn't potentially kill some helpful nutrients in milk, but it's miles and miles safer than the alternative. I'd rather have fewer nutrients in my food and beverages at the cost of them being significantly safer to consume. One of the sections of their Shame of Pasteurization page discusses vitamin A specifically, citing a paper on the subject from January of 2000 that they claim states, "'Vitamin A is very sensitive to chemical degradation caused by oxygen, light, heat, and other stress factors.'" I just wanna point out that this quote had absolutely no explanation of what the fuck it actually meant. Now, 
we spent some time to consider what this quote was actually trying to say. I doubt a lot of other people saw this and just, you know, went on their merry way to do more research to discover what this quote actually meant to them. And what I kind of found a little funny um, was I found like what a ketol was. I discovered that ketols when exposed to heat actually produce more vitamin A, which unsurprisingly is actually the exact opposite of what this stupid quote, at least what I think is trying to get at. Like what? Why, why did you come to that conclusion? How did you get there? I do not know, but that is the conclusion they came to apparently. And to add insult to injury, I was actually able to track down a meta-analysis also published in the National Library of Medicine from 2011. And it talks specifically about the effect of pasteurization on milk vitamins. In their findings, 40 studies assessing the effects of pasteurization on vitamin levels were found qualitatively. Vitamins B12 and E decreased following pasteurization and vitamin A increased. They do go on to mention that concentrations of B vitamins, mainly B2, were decreased via heat treatment, but not vitamin A. The paper does talk about the supposed link between allergy development and raw milk, saying that there could be a connection based on six studies done. As far as the connections with cancer and lactose intolerance, those would not appear to be affected by raw milk according to the studies done. And look, I'm not trying to make it seem like I want raw milk to not be effective at what these people are claiming it is. Saying things like it's more nutritionally dense or it can give you more nutrients than regular milk we see in stores is kind of okay with me as the claim itself does really no harm. But when you go around saying it can help with your child's asthma or cancer, that's when I start to take issue with it. So then what does raw milk do? Well, it appears it can simply give you access to more nutritionally dense milk in general. Is pasteurization a bad thing that destroys milk and takes away what milk does for you in like a good way? No, not really. It's a process that makes it safer for us to consume overall. And I, for one, think that's worth losing out on just a hair of vitamin content for. So now that we've heard claims from our pro raw milk entities, why don't we take a peek at what the leading health officials in the US have to say? So here comes the CDC and the FDA to hopefully clear up some things for us. And before we hop into that, I'm just gonna take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. Today's episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey. Thanks to Honey, searching for manual coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones it finds to your cart. It supports over 30,000 stores online, ranging from tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. And I've been trying to get my holiday shopping done a little bit early this year. And thanks to Honey, as I'm checking out every time, they're finding me some great coupons so that I'm giving a little gift back to my wallet as I shop. And Honey is super easy to use if you've never used it. All you do is do your shopping like normal. When you're ready to check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. It searches the internet for any coupon, it tries to apply them to your cart, and if it finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. So if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on holiday deals. It's literally free and installs in just a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. And I'd never recommend something that I don't use. So get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com casket. That's joinhoney.com slash casket. Now your hair is super unique and your hair care should be too. Function of Beauty makes products that are 100% customizable with ingredients designed and formulated to meet your specific hair goals. Founded by a team of engineers and cosmetic scientists, each Function of Beauty product is individually designed to be as unique as you are. And with over 54 trillion possible formulations, Each one is vegan and cruelty-free with no sulfates and parabens, and you can go completely silicone-free too. So there is literally an option for everybody. As winter is kicking up, it's really important to maintain hydration in my hair. So I've been trying to use hydrating things, not so much of the volumizing. It tends to make my hair a little bit kind of wiry or gross through the cold seasons. And it's super easy. I pick what I want, choose what I don't want in my product. I can pick colors, scents, whatever. You guys know I'm picking the peach and you can do what you want. And then it gets shipped to your door ASAP. Oh, and if you're sensitive to color and fragrance, you can do dye or fragrance-free options too, or you can kind of do them together. I did that over the summer. Actually really nice, by the way. So start giving your hair the personalized care it needs. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash casket to take your hair goals quiz, and you'll save 20% on your first order when you subscribe. No commitments, and you can cancel anytime. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash casket to let them know you heard it from our show and to get 20% off your first order. Again, functionofbeauty.com slash casket to take your hair quiz and save 20% on your first order. Despite the many wild claims from these organizations, I'm sorry to say that raw milk does not help your body fight cancer or eczema 
or asthma or cure lactose intolerance. Well, I'm not really that sorry to make that statement, honestly. Claims like that are dangerous as we'll soon find out here. Thankfully, both the FDA and CDC have stepped in to make the dangers known and be certain that people understand as best they can. The CDC has provided testimonials from families that decided to make the switch so you can get a better idea of the potential dangers raw milk can pose to you and also to the people you can subject to it. Like your children, perhaps. Since a lot of people who support things like raw milk and other all natural miracle foods like to give it to their children. I know everyone would say it's just for your kid's health. You wanna give your kids the best of the best, right? Like, of course you would as a parent, at least I'm not a parent, but I assume that's what you would wanna do is do the best thing for your kid. The problem is if things go south, they're going to absolutely go that way for the most important people in your life, as well as you. I don't think it's responsible for someone to be okay with the risks when it's not just them taking on the risk. They aren't alone and it's dangerous. One testimonial from the CDC comes from a mother named Julie Riggs, who decided to switch her and her family from cow's milk to raw goat milk. And she claims she did that due to the family's inability to handle the former. The story that follows is not a pretty sight. Julie describes that just a few short days after her daughter began ingesting the goat milk, she began suffering from stomach pains, diarrhea, and was just kind of throwing up. Her daughter was taken to the doctor and upon being tested was flown to a children's hospital. Over the course of the next two weeks, her daughter's pancreas would shut down and her kidneys would stop functioning properly, which caused her to be placed on dialysis. And what did this you might ask? Well, it was an E. coli infection from the raw goat milk that caused it. The cherry on top for this poor family was the husband was also falling ill at the same time as their daughter, leaving Julie to take on the task of making the medical decisions by herself. And you would think that maybe this event was kind of isolated, but it's not. Mary McGonagall Martin, a mother of a seven-year-old, did research to make sure that the raw milk she was buying was safe. She found a farmer that had been in business for several years and claimed to test his milk for contamination before sale. After buying a quart to test it, her son fell ill. Being diagnosed with HUS, it's called like hemolytic uremic syndrome. I apologize if I didn't pronounce that right. Um, It's caused by, as you may have guessed, E. coli infection. His kidneys shut down and after bouncing to three hospitals over the course of two months, he was placed on a ventilator. This child was suffering from congestive heart failure on top of all of this. Now, both of these stories have, shall we say, happier endings. Mary's son made a seemingly full recovery a few years later and Julie's daughter and husband made it out okay, albeit with some lasting effects for her daughter. But what about those that it didn't work out so well for? If stories like these are out there, you can bet someone has had a worse experience. I think the worst part about these stories is that they're generally affecting children the most, the ones usually most at risk and the ones who probably don't get a say in what kind of milk they're given. Just for the record here, I don't wanna make it seem like I'm not sympathetic towards families that are really just trying to give their loved ones the best they can when it comes to health. There's nothing wrong with wanting that for your family. And it's absolutely terrible that some people have to go through stuff like this just for their kids' health. I think Mary puts it best as saying, the risk of raw milk isn't just a tummy ache for a few days or diarrhea and vomiting that goes away. The risk is that a pathogen could kill you. She goes on to mention that the risks don't even cross her mind because all of the information that she came across only spoke about the positives. Now, in my own findings, when you do a simple little Google search for raw milk, the CDC and the FDA are the first two results, explicitly telling you of the dangers of the product. It's very possible that a decade ago, this same research could have resulted in sites like the Raw Milk Institute or even worse. Now, the FDA goes even harder into this whole thing. The CDC showed you real world examples of consequences, whereas the FDA wanted to get down to brass tacks. They practically give you a book's worth of information, making very clear statements against raw milk, and they do not mince words here. The very first paragraph is titled, Raw Milk Does Not Cure Lactose Intolerance which I'm sure most of us can read and infer that yes, indeed, milk is not going to cure your lactose intolerance. How about this one? Raw milk is not an immune system building food and is particularly unsafe for children. It's backed up by at least eight separate references to support the statement, not a random singular study that talks about something else entirely. It shouldn't be a novel concept, you know, using sources that actually back up your arguments, or in this case, facts. You can't hang on a single source that actually doesn't mention your claims at all. I'm not trying to say that government agencies are infallible, but they aren't sensationalizing a less safe version of something that may not be good for you anyway. I mean, the federal government did back a few campaigns regarding how good milk is for you. And there are debates about whether or not milk is good for you at all. Back in the day, a few campaigns were adamantly trying to convince the public that milk was a magic beverage, just like the raw milk advocates are now. 
the government was pushing milk hard on public health. Drink up, it'll make you stronger, make your bones stronger, that whole thing. Even if raw milk did provide more nutritional benefit, and even if it did do everything the advocates claim it does, it just simply wouldn't be worth the risk. As we just saw, the consequences of taking said risk can have dire effects and can last for years. I personally don't know anybody that would consider raw milk to be worth it. And just at the end of the day, can we be frank here? Don't drink raw milk. There's no need or health benefits at all really to it. It's a more dangerous and risky variant of a product that's already come into question regarding the validity of its health benefits anyway. Even if you drink raw milk every day with no issues for years and years at any point, you could still eventually run into a batch that leaves you pretty messed up. All the while, you're getting virtually nothing in return. So when it comes to the famous question, got milk? No, I'm gonna stick with pretty much anything else. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's episode of The Corporate Casket. I hope you learned something new here today. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest episodes. If you'd like to connect with me outside of these episodes, make sure to click my link tree link in the description box. It's gonna have all of my social media and any projects I'm currently involved in. Thank you again for joining me for today's episode. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.